They say there are people walking among us who once lived in an ocean of water and swam through an ocean of consciousness as if ocean and body and the universe were all the same thing. And these oceanic beings walking among us were once upon a time known as whales and they were connected. They were connected to the cloud beings whose tears watered the earth. And they were connected to the rooted ones whose hearts healed the earth. And they were connected to the land walkers who sang, chanted, and spoke this earth into being. And once upon a time, those oceanic beings and land walkers were kindreds as the most ancient story of the universe lived through them. It is that story that brings us together tonight, a story about giving and receiving. And in this ancient story, when the land walkers asked for a life, the whale beings gave a life. And when gratitude was offered, a pathway between body and spirit was forged, an exchange was made as the spirit of the whale was invited to live through the body of the land walkers. And in this way, even death led to more life. This was not written down. There was no signing of a contract. It was just known until one day it wasn't. And when this ancient law of the universe of asking, giving, receiving, gratitude was broken, a curse was cast on the land walkers. And the way that this curse worked was the more they took, the hungrier they got. They say that is when greed was born, but that is another story and we are deep into this story. Some of those whale beings decided they weren't going to join that death march led by the killing and greed that was slaughtering their aunts and their uncles, murdering their mothers and their fathers, sisters and brothers. No, they were going to make good on that ancient agreement between their ancestors. So they decided to leave their oceanic world so they could walk again on earth through the bodies of the descendants of those ancestors who had made that sacred contract because they would need to walk among the two-leggeds to put an end to those who were interrupting the flow of life. When the old ones heard of this news, they gathered them in and they warned them, you can't kill the being that is killing and get to the source of what is living through them. It is when you get to the source of their anguish that you will get to the source of what is causing this disruption of life, and that is what you must hunt down. And the elders warned those young ones, it is dangerous going from one world to another. There is risk of forgetting who and what you are in the process. And please don't forget, you can't rush to show the truth of who and what you really are. You will have to be patient and wait because the disruption you will face has become very, very powerful. And you see, there is strength in numbers. You will need others to protect you. For you are not alone on this mission. There will be others. The fairy folk will join you. They have a bone or two to pick with those takers. And the elfin will be there cleverly disguised, no longer willing to step on or over, and the plant deities will start speaking through the voices of humans. The mer people will rise and walk among you, and the dragons will fly again. Look for the signs, for when Earth recognizes that enough of you have made it through, she will shake awake all who are still forgetting. Now, of course, there is no guarantee how long it will take, 
or that everyone will arrive, or that you will even make it out alive. One of those young ones looked back, realizing for the first time what the elders weren't saying, that there would be no return to this ocean home it loved so much. But, but what will we do while we are waiting, walking our flippers on land? And the elder advised, study. Study the new ways of this land and the old ways and the broken ways and perhaps most important, the disconnected ways. And sing, sing your love medicine and it will be your song that brings them back to the source. Bring them the dream of who they once were and who they will be yet again. And so they left, just a few, but enough. So they left everything that they knew and everything that they were to make good on that sacred contract between the ancient landwalkers and the ocean dwellers and the spirit of life herself. This is the story of those brave souls who dared to walk on land among us and what they discovered as they tried to remember what they were and what they were not. We swam to the surface as fast as we could so we could walk among them and release them from this curse. Walking on land outside of the all of the all, it was so easy to forget. But as we sang, we remembered. There was a time when we were whales, and we knew the strength and true power of what we were when we were whales. We sang the mother's milk of the universe into being. We built treasure chests of understanding. We made beds of wonder and caressed all the sea creatures with our caring. When we were whales, we dressed in pearls made of dances dedicated to the sun while blowing bubbles that married the ocean to the sky. As we walked as two-leggeds on earth, fear surrounded us as if it fought to inhabit us. And we began to understand what those two-leggeds were up against a scarcity slipped around us and tried to feed us lives. But we remembered. We remembered when we were whales, we understood the marriage of life to death, of water to oil, of the sun to the moon. We would fly through the sky as we wove those two worlds together, above and below, inside and out, light to dark. And so we walked that on land. And still, it was so easy to forget what we were made of. But we remembered, when we were whales, we loved, and we loved, and we loved. Ugh, we were the cherry on top kind of love. But we did as we were instructed and we studied the two-leggeds, and we became familiar with them and their ways, and we understood more and more about this curse that had been cast upon them. There was a thing they called hate, and it scraped away at their insides. There was no place for mystery in their lives, but the strangest of all, is they had an unreliable tongue. It would say what they didn't mean and make what was bad for the body taste good. 
But then the tongue was so unreliable that it could also bring beauty. It could calm the nervous system. It could bring hidden things into view. But an unreliable tongue destroys trust. And we found things we never expected. You see, in our world, that holds us is us. Suffering, joy, love, it can't be hoarded or separated. When one has it, all have it. But on land, where the laws of separation reside, the landwalkers had developed a very special talent that we didn't have. Those two-leggeds had empathy. The ability to feel through the heart and see through the eyes of the other. And as we learned from them, we began to understand them. We did as our elders told us, and we sang to the people. We sang to your hearts and we sang to your memories so that you could remember and put back together that you are the ones who are chanting and singing and speaking this world into being and that you are needed. So while we studied you and gave you our song and our love, because of that unreliable tongue, even though we were told to, we did not dare to give you our dreams. Instead, we sang our dreams of who the two-leggeds really are and how they could be again into the water, into her rivers, lakes, and rain, so that you can remember every time you touched her. And we sang our dreams into the arms of the trees so that you could root that knowledge into this land so that every step the two-leggeds took on this earth could be another moment of remembering. Because you see, when two-leggeds breathe, they are in relationship to spirit. And when they eat, they are in relationship to earth. When they swim and breathe and drink, they are in relationship to us. And we told the two-leggeds again and again and again what we know is true. You are loved. And you can love again. For you are love walking on land as we are love singing through the ocean. The ocean of your body. Eventually, we learned how to walk in your world, in a world that holds both beauty and hate, love and war. And our world became larger. Some will say that we forgot how to be what we are when we walked among you as people of the whale, as we waited for the others to arrive. But we know that is just because they do not know that once you are a whale, you are always a whale. And you will always be a whale. I see you just now, with those two legs and flippers disguised as arms. You are different. It is not so easy to glide through life. But as people of the whale, you walk the ways of whale on earth. 
and you sing, keeping the memories alive of what you once were. And you keep sharing the dream, telling the stories, even though some will think you are just spinning fantasies and fairy tales. Because on great occasion, another person of the whale will catch the harmony of your song, and something that has been quiet and dormant within them will wake. Because your call tells them that it is safe to come out and reveal the truth of what they are. Because you, dear one, have done your job to learn the old ways and the new ways and the strange ways and the broken ways and the hardened ways and perhaps the most meaningful, the disconnected ways. And even though everything you have seen, known and felt as you've walked in the light of the sun and in the darkness of a one moon world, you sew the world together from this place. And as you look to the little ones and you say, you be you, and we be we, and us be us. And you know how the rest of that song and dance goes. And you look into the eyes of the elders, and you listen. Before you speak, you are loved. You have always been loved. And you will always be love. Magic on earth. 